Welcome in. This is the Future Friday Podcast with me, Tom May. On this episode, I talked with DIY punk rock magician and dear friend Mike Casey. Casey Magic, as he goes by, has been blowing my goddamn mind and warmed my soul for almost a decade. He's based in Raleigh, North Carolina in the old, uh, the old triangle there. Not only is he an incredible artist and you know mind-blowing magician, but he is a goddamn scientist through and through. He has performed for some super famous and interesting people and has the stories to go along with it. Uh, we got to catch up while he came through supporting the old 97s here in Philadelphia. I am pleased to announce this is the first sponsored episode of the podcast. This episode is brought to you by Enjoyco Barber in Portland, Oregon. You may be wondering why a bald man from Philadelphia would be sponsored by a barber shop in Portland. Well, it's because they rule and it's because it's owned by one of my best friends, Corey Cerisi. I got to visit Corey and Kyle and Eddie at the shop over New Year's and it's just great. Uh, I had a great time. I really didn't give them too much to work with and I left there looking and feeling fantastic. Definitely something about talking shit and getting your hair cut that gives you a little jump start. You know, I remember uh, my dad taking my brother and I and sometimes my sisters down to Sam's in South Scranton being super pissed that I had to sit there the whole damn time. But looking back on it now, I realize everybody was just kind of catching up and, uh, and enjoying a lazy day. You know, I mean, after all, we are the broke ass, uh, nervous, in debt generation that may or may not live long enough to watch the ocean reclaim the human species. So uh, a little self care can go a long way. You can book an appointment with them over at enjoycobarber.com. Love you, buddy. Now, enough bullshit. My dear friend, the loving, talented magician and scientist, right, Mike Casey. In front of it. Be great. But yeah, Mike, thank you so much for uh, being on the podcast with me. Mm. For those of you who don't know, and I probably just did an intro that I'll record later where I say all this, but you're uh, one of my most um, talented and interesting friends. I've known you for, we decided uh, seven or eight years, mm-hmm. we realized, which is a long fucking time. A long time. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, you are a... Magician, mm-hmm. a new musician, and a scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a new musician. Stretching it, but I yeah. mean, I've seen just like I've seen like uh, you know your videos. Are you playing piano? It's a I love very playing impressive. piano. It's fun. It's yeah. a lot of fun. I don't know anything about it other than like mimicking right now. So it's just like I can play Hotel California, or whatever you know. Like <laughs> that's all I can do. But like you go, well, what's an A chord? And I would have to like struggle to figure it out. But like, uh, uh, a and add but I actually third, can do that pretty fifth. good. Yeah, yeah. there's fifths and sevenths. So I'm trying to do the music theory and read all at the same time. Yeah. So what I love about the piano is, uh, is when it comes to music theory, is it is the standard as it comes to visualization. So yeah. a lot of electronic instruments you'll use uh, the piano roll to to build melodies and stuff. It's all listed as a yeah. piano. So it's like all really... the notes are there. So you just go. That's great. Them. Yeah. I love it. Uh, so yeah, you've been doing that, which takes a lot of practice. And mm-hmm. uh, I noticed that, I mean, all of the magic that you do takes a whole lot of practice. And yeah. I wanted to ask you, how do you maintain that level of focus? And like, how do you... Uh, how are you able to organize it into those those facets, especially with the magic tricks, man? Like you do move your hands so quickly, mm-hmm. so much more quickly than than anybody you know, regular layperson can. It's weird. I think like uh, so with piano, I practice every day, probably like an hour, but it's broken. It's like I'll sit down for like ten or twenty minutes or thirty minutes, and then later sit down and do it again. And nice. Maybe like first time through, I'll be trying to run through a song or two, and then the second time through, I'll try to like read some music and like try to build some speed right, so it's like goal oriented as mm-hmm. opposed to being like i'm but gonna no, practice like, for one hour goals it's just like yeah. i want to move in that direction yeah uh magic though nowadays it's more thought so like my practice is just me thinking about everything okay so it's like all in my head so like it's not like because like the skill part i've been doing it 22 years yeah so the skill part's already there it's like i know what my skill set is i know what i'm capable of now it's just going like oh man you know it'd be cool if i did that and then, and then you kind of start the back structure in your brain and then half the time it takes a year or so to get an idea together no that shit. might be good and then then you have to like give birth to it and do it and then when you do it then you're like all right and then you constantly like kind of shape it more but it has to kind of come out at some point otherwise it's just this like idea so like my show tonight TLA all those pieces were totally different when I started performing them and when I thought they performed them than they are now and like you just add little pieces little pieces and they get to the point and you're like now it's like good yeah hell yeah it's not unlike songwriting which is uh, the thing that I could relate it to I guess and come back to in that you have this thing inside of you that needs to come out part of it is definitely mimicking the uh, music that we listened to growing up and it's like kind of the way that we made us feel and we want to make other people feel that way kind of thing but you get this like thing together and you might have a melody you might have like the vibe even on acoustic guitar and that goes through so many changes by the time it becomes a uh, becomes a song 
Yeah. But yeah, it's like uh, not necessarily formulaic the way that you get from point A to point B, but it's uh, yeah, it can all kind of happen there with a pen and paper and, a, and an instrument. So it's uh, pretty wild how you could come up with like a, an experience, I guess, would be a magic Yeah, trick. and I think that's really the thing. So it's not necessarily the mechanics. It's it's trying to get to the experience of what you're trying to communicate with your magic, whether that's like fear or fun or mystery or whatever. And then, you know, you directionally start going and like, what would be really mysterious or really scary or really weird or whatever. And then, then you you kind of like, start honing it to be like, well, this would be really weird and that would be really, and I can do this and maybe I can't do that. Or how can I, um, construct this in a way that I can do it, um, or, or perceive it. And then you're always thinking of the audience first. Yeah. And that's a really weird place cause you know how it works, but you always have to keep in mind that like some magicians can really get in their head and be like, no, it's just really good. Cause I just know it's really good and it, it might be, but like you always really have to just take a step back and go, well, what's the audience seeing? Yeah. Cause somebody might not, get it or yeah. opposite Me so too. how do you how do you make them get it you know yeah so. that's so cool we uh went shopping one time at a magic <laughs> store off of south street yeah and i find the mystique that goes around like the idea that you can have these old books that are incredibly expensive and have oh, yeah. uh, the, the solutions to some tricks in them um, i don't know if that's what you would even call it Wouldn't i would say solution. like recipes Reci- they're like yeah, recipe recipes. books you don't have to follow them but they're kind of good ideas it's like oh this is like a guacamole bean salad and you're like yeah, but I don't like that. I'm going to change this. And yeah, then I'm going to make salt. a guacamole taco bean salad. And they're like, oh, huh, well, that's cool. But Hell you have yeah. a basis for it, you know. So I'm really excited because Baltimore is tomorrow, and I'm going to go. Uh, my favorite magic shops in Baltimore. So awesome. I need to go there. And some of the guys are really pumped to go. So a bunch of the old 97s are we're going to get an Uber that's tomorrow so cool. morning. And yeah, when we went to that one store and they have those like old, really expensive books. Right? Yeah. I've seen them online or when you talked about them. That signed me the fuck up for that shit. I love the like weird mystique around it. It's I'll send like, you a you picture know, from so my cool. favorite place when I get there in Baltimore because it'll blow your mind how many books there are. So I, like, I picture it somehow. It's down like a cobblestone alleyway. No, uh, <laughs> it's really not. It's like kind of counterintuitive, but when you get in there, it's like smells like smoke and a bunch of old dudes sitting around going, "Man, I used to be whatever." You know, it's oh, kind of cool. It. Like any that. specialty like, shop of any kind. Yeah, it's like the, yeah. <laughs> it could be a sports bar for magic nerds where That's they just they just kind of post up and hang out and tell stories about like. I remember when Houdini was here, <laughs> you know, or whatever. Um, oh, yeah. It's pretty funny. So we were uh, talking a little bit before this in your, uh, I guess, propensity for, I don't know, not like an illusion or quick hands. It started when you were younger when mm-hmm. we were talking about scams. And, yeah. And uh, you'd mentioned they used to have a baseball card scam. Oh, yeah. Huge yeah. baseball card So this scam. has been, this notion has been with you for a really long time. Yeah, I think I was taught, like, um, at a really young age because I, I grew up in Baltimore and, Um, my dad was like on the struggle bus financially, like all the time. So he was always, I remember he was always siphoning gas out of people's cars and shit and like just doing wild, reckless shit. Yeah. Uh, that I look back now, I go, Oh my God, that was so wild and reckless. But when I was a kid, I was like, that's just what you do. And like, you don't have money. So you take what you can or get away with. And like, he would run scams where like we would buy like a Commodore 64 computer and the disk drive would crash. So he would go buy a new one and then put the old one in there and then like keep the new one and then take the old one back and be like, Oh, this thing doesn't work. I want my money money back. back. And then like, (laughs) Whoa, like that's fucking crazy. And like, I just learned that, um, growing up. And so, you know, I was like stealing shit and I feel really bad about it. Not at the time because you're a fucking kid and you think it's really cool. You're like, I'm just fucking stealing all this shit, you know? Um, and then fast forward, (laughs) I won't name the company, but I was like 19 (laughs) And I ran in, and, and all my friends were there, and we're we're still poor white trash Jacksonville, you know. And then um, we just noticed we were stockmen, so we could go anywhere we wanted in the store, you know. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, there's a statute of limitations on this, so I don't tell it. But like, uh, we just noticed that like you could get away with like sneaking shit out the back door, or whatever, you know. Just yeah. Like little this, little that. We didn't get paid. I mean, I was making like three. 10 an hour. I mean, not much. It was yeah, like totally. pittance, you know, and this is like the early 90s. Yeah, I don't think I know anybody who grew up uh, like in punk rock kind of alternative culture or anybody like kind of all my friends, sorry mom, that didn't, you know, take off the top of your job. Yeah. They weren't and, and you know, it sucks. 10 cents an hour, like fuck that. But me and these dudes had this ring and we were like stealing fucking everything. Like we were just stealing <laughs> so much shit. I mean, so much shit. And one of them got caught not me. Uh, um, and then he ratted everybody else out. And then so the whole operation kids. like fell apart, you know, and then we all were out of a job and we got fired. And I, I made this really like grandiose gesture that I literally went in my house and I took 
everything that I stole. I mean, I just like everything. I just like brought it back to them, like hoping for forgiveness. Cause I'm like 18, 19 years old yeah. at the time. I just put it there and then they still fired me and then made an <laughs> example of me and say, Hey, you, that guy, he was really cool. You liked him, but he stole like over thousands and thousands of dollars with his friends, like from yeah. this thing. And they, they made a display of all the shit I'd stole. Wow. Um, yeah. It was re- really bad. I had like an existential crisis and I decided I would never ever steal again ever and i haven't no like, shit i don't even like to like try to like that's such I'll a put profound one extra, thing to happen i can't believe you yeah. brought this stuff back that's amazing yeah you are well i figured like that was kid, me man. like cosmically cleaning my slate yeah. so i don't even like like put an extra pepper and like not charge it or anything. like i just don't like do that like it's yeah. not a thing because i remember how awful i felt so then i think when magic came around it was a way to to do that without hurting anyone it's incredible yeah so i was like you know you could perform it and do the stuff and kind of get the same thrill of like juicing somebody i guess or like yeah. whatever and like but it's not harming anybody it's just fun hell yeah sorry we, that was a long story no i love that that was incredible <laughs> that's fantastic we had a similar thing where we had a friend who worked at a company and would print out gifts receipts oh wow and then we would take turns going into the store Getting the and, thing. Uh, picking the thing off the shelf and returning it for cash. And yeah. we were doing it too much at one store, so we started to go to all the stores in the area. And then one of the kids who worked there got caught. And uh, It all comes they, down. Yeah, it all came down. I mean, they only charged them like five or 600 bucks, and we were literally stealing. And this is, it was bad. We were just taking yeah, yeah. cash. You know, it wasn't just stealing like video games or something stupid. Uh, taking cash and just like. I was doing video games and shit. Yeah, yeah, it was like, uh. Or like taking stuff and then hiding it in the box and then buying it. Yeah. And. There'd be like a video game inside oh, of the yeah. lamp that you bought. That we kind did of, that all too. that shit. Yeah. Totally. I think that's like, that's One of our it. friends got caught though while we were there. Uh-huh. Uh We were just, you know, it was really dumb high school shoplifting shit. Like I stole like a marker or something. But the secret shopper came out and one of my friends pulled a pair of suspenders out of his pocket and he was like, um, score. And the guy's like, oh yeah, what else you got? And we were like, oh shit, we're busted. And he's like, tell him, where's, uh, where's, all, the, where's all the women's underwear? And we were like, what? What are you talking about, man? And it turns out our friend had gone and he just put on a bunch of it under his clothes. Women's underwear? Yeah, it was really wow. an interesting kind of thing because it was like... Huh. Uh, everybody's like, Fred, Everybody's like, dude, up? what? Yeah, that's pretty <laughs> wild. I don't, there's not really a way to make a you know, 15-year-old dude more uncomfortable. Than that. Yeah, no shit. Right? <laughs> so it was funny. That's funny. Yeah, it's definitely funny to look back on now that we're older, but at the time it was like a really kind of like a... I don't think we any of us even talked about it. You know, yeah, I don't think we did either. Like yeah. when we all got lost our jobs. Not everybody lost their jobs. There was some really super tight goody goodies that were like doing it too, but they mm. kept their job. One of yeah. them was like a manager of this chain store, like no a big shit. head of one, which is really funny. Um, yeah, it was just, it was really weird. So like I said, I think that's why magic was an, a normal thing for me. Cause like I said, my dad stole so much stuff. Like he would just, he would hike up. We would go in these like, um, uh, remote areas of like Maryland and he would put, he would have those, uh, tree pole climbing spikes. Yeah. Okay. And he would go up and he would just go, Oh, go play with your bow and arrows. I'm like four. So it's like 78 or whatever, maybe 70, 77. And then, um, he was like, go play. And I would just shoot the bow and arrow up and then hide in the grass. And we were just in these long stretches of like where the telephone poles went. And he was just like cutting the copper grounding wires off <laughs> of the thing, like shimmying up the pole. I didn't know what he was Damn, doing at the time. Wow. But when I was a kid, I was like, Oh, what's that for? He's like, Oh, you know, we're just going to take this to the thing. Like, we're going to take it back to these people. You know, he was just like lying to me and stuff. And wow. like, he would go sell all that copper ground wire for like money. And then Damn. Like, do you remember when you realized that that's what was going on? Were you like an older uh, adult? Kind of no, like? cause it was such a slow burn. Uh, like it was like, I didn't, it was just like what you do. Yeah, so it totally. didn't, didn't really come across as wrong until I think I got caught for it. And then that's when it was like, it all, it became very clear. No shit. Yeah. Uh, it was pretty bad. Yeah. It's intense, man. Yeah. I'm glad that you took that, uh, life, skill <laughs> it's what it is and turn it into turn something it into that's something pretty positive, fucking incredible yeah. yeah uh yeah that's amazing yeah so i used to be a little scammer hell yeah yeah it's a fascinating story i know you've told this story before but i wanted to ask you uh again the moment that you decided to kind of pursue this more professionally magic yeah yeah i mean i had been doing it for a while and then i i was doing it restaurants and stuff and I was just like making money and it was like a lot of money for me at the time. So it was like a hundred bucks a night or 200 bucks a night. And I was like, wow, every week I had to go like make, it's like 800 bucks. It's yeah, fucking crazy. Just like, and then I would lose a job and then another restaurant would pick me up and I would lose a job and I'd be at them for like years. So I honed my skills with people pretty good doing that. And then, um, I got hired by Camel cigarettes cause they wanted to try out different like variety talents mm-hmm. to go give cigarettes away. 
and um they were like oh will you come do this thing we got like we're gonna do characters one week and we're gonna do like uh balloon guy and then, and then we'll try the magician and then they ended up settling on me so like i did all these shows for like three months every thursday friday saturday getting paid like five six hundred bucks a night hell yeah and that's how i got into the clubs and when the people would see me at the clubs they would go oh you know all these bands you should get on stage and do this really good and then that just kind of like slowly rolls to here we are today yeah you know? man you carved it out yeah, it was really funny. I was at um, Pappy and Harriet's, and they, uh, Future, Future Islands had just played there. And I remember um, I was going to do this show in, like, 2004, 2003. It was my first, like, stagey-type show where I was just going to do, like, 10 minutes between bands. And Future Islands was a new band in Chapel Hill. And no shit. Tra- yeah, and they were going to open for me, but somebody had to work, and they had to bail. So it was like, Damn. oh, my, my, the guy who booked the club was like, yeah, this band, Future Islands, pretty good. Like, they're local guys. You know, it was all local bands and stuff. and then, That's um, great. Yeah, and I wanted to be like, shit, I wish Lake could have opened for me. Then I could just always be like, you opened for me and you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny that uh, the, the, if everybody's not familiar, I don't think they do it anymore. I could be wrong. I haven't seen them in years, but they used to have people would come to the bar and hand out cigarettes. Yeah, that's what I did. That's yeah, what I was, yeah. I was in on that click. Yeah, and I guess just being in North Carolina right there, that's like right in oh, cigarette sweet territory. Oh, Sweet Spot, Winston, yeah, Salem, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, we would go to different cities, Charlotte, Winston, Greensboro, Wilmington. And mm. for a weekend, we would just roll around the, all the – we would go to like five or six nightclubs and bars and stuff a night. Show up, there would be all these like girls like in – scantily clad stuff standing out cigarettes standing out cigarettes and i would be like and then you would see this wave as the scantily clad girls walk through the club all the guys turn and all the women groan (laughs) and so like i really took that opportunity to be like well actually i'm here for you to entertain you with something a little more intelligent than you know polar rods what the yeah the the whole ladies the like Um, bear like as low to the human condition as yeah you can get. and it was like it was like hey i'm here for you like let's do some fun <laughs> not stuff. to disparage the cigarette models no right? no i mean they were just doing they had a job too yeah I mean, totally. that was their that was their role just like it just played into the like you know gender sexism i guess yeah totally you know, in a sense um it was just really funny to watch the sea of women's scornful faces <laughs> of like can you believe this bitch you know like they <laughs> Yeah, the uh, I remember they would come around and anybody who all of our friends who didn't smoke, it was great. They would all give their ideas. So we would all just yeah, get so you could get so more many cigarettes. cigarettes. Oh yeah, and a bunch of our friends had the job uh, we called the like the cigarette fairy job. Yeah, yeah, they, they had the, come ba- and, the bag of them. Yeah, and big they would bag scan of... your shit with the little dolphin thing. Or yeah, whatever. it was awesome. And uh, they would come to uh, house parties and house shows and just hand out cigarettes. <laughs> and then it switched to they can only hand out coupons. And then yeah, then nobody coupon. wants coupons. Yeah, and you're like, all right, I guess I'll work. get this coupon. I mean, it's like a dollar for a pack, so whatever. Yeah, that's I was really uh, fascinated by that area down in uh, the the like tri- three cities that are there. It's oh like yeah, Triangle, Durham. like Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Yeah, yeah it's a really it's really uh, cool place. Every that's where I went we to school. There, shows get better. Oh no shit, hell yeah. I went to school at Chapel Hill. And um, you studied physics. I got a bachelor of science in biology and a minor in chemistry. Nice. Yeah. So it's kind of on a pre med track. I wanted to be a doctor. Oh yeah. And then I uh, just didn't want to be a doctor. I was like, oh, I think I might want to. It wasn't even the magic thing. It was just like, oh, maybe I want to figure out after I got out of school, I want to get a job that paid for something, uh, and then I could do whatever I wanted to do on the side. So whatever that was, you know, I tried my hand at painting for a while and uh, different things. Magic was always there, but I didn't really think it was sustainable, and now it's like a total, it's my second full-time job. Yeah, hell yeah. it happens like 5 to 9 or 5 to midnight or whatever. Exactly. Every night. <laughs> so it's like I go 9 to 5, and then I'm out, and then I'm like, all right, I got to go do a show tonight at yeah. 8, you know. That is a funny part about what we do is uh, you kind of just, the nightlife is your life. You yeah. Know? I think I was talking about that with uh, with Roger yesterday. And it's exhausting. It can be really <laughs> exhausting. <laughs> Definitely. We, uh, before we did the podcast, you were looking at your um, Fitbit's sleep tracker. Oh, yeah. And realizing that when you're on the bus, you get like maybe three, three or four, four hours, hours of sleep. sleep. It's really bad. And I've, yeah. I've been trying to like figure out ways. I just. And it is being fortunate enough to tour in a bus is awesome. Yeah. You don't have to spend the entire day. Oh, in it's great. But uh, you do. There are moments of extreme existential dread when yeah. you're inside this tiny, maybe what's it about three feet high at most. No, yeah, it's less like than that. Maybe like two and a half. Yeah, two and a half feet, and then by like for me, it's easy. I'm a short guy, so if my bunk's like seven feet long. I got plenty of room. Yeah. But with the curtain closed, you're in this really dark thing, flying through the highway. Oh yeah. And you're like, at oh, whatever, a miles an hour. Yeah. You know? It's five thirty in the morning, and I'm not gonna fall back asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's me every day, and like it I'm sucks. always up on the bus, like kind of sitting in the lounge, and um. 
the first two days of tour, I went running for like a couple miles, which was really awesome. Uh, the third day, we were making a, a trek from Portland to uh, San Francisco, which was a pretty long drive. And so yeah. I got up to just put my running pants on to hang out in the bus because I knew we had a long drive. And we yeah. had this uh, bus driver, D Way, and he was like, Boy, you ain't going to run today, man. We got a long drive. And I was like, <laughs> I wasn't trying to, D Wayne. But he looked at me like I was crazy because um, I went, I, I told you, I like running. So I tried to like make some time to run. And uh, I saw a YMCA in downtown Portland and we were at the Wonder Ballroom. And so I ran like two and a half, three miles to downtown Portland to this YMCA to take a shower and like, you know, yeah. get my stuff together in the morning. And I put my whole entire backpack on and I was doing like 10 minute miles. It was amazing. And it was oh, so yeah. cold. Got there, couldn't find it. And then turns out it was a child care center and that's all the YMCA <laughs> is in Portland. Yeah. And they're like, you work out at a YMCA? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. Like that's like, they have showers <laughs> the and saunas and, and, in swimming pools yeah. that's what i was coming to downtown portland to do and it's like no they're all child care centers in, wow. in oregon and i was like huh maybe that's not true but it definitely was anyone in the vicinity that i was looking to go to was a child care center so i'm all sweaty and then defeated and i was like oh don't get a shower now i gotta stay sweaty yeah that kind of sums up tour right there in so many aspects i mean it's better now that we have smartphones and yeah. we can like look at stuff on yelp at first when we didn't have smartphones it was like all right i guess i'll just walk around and it see what's here it came up as a ymca it was yeah a so YMCA the worst show. is when you, you're yeah. excited to go somewhere that you found on your phone and you're like oh fuck yes this is like my <laughs> diet specific place it's oh, gonna yeah. be awesome and you get there and it's been closed for like three years oh and you're like oh yeah or fuck. moved across town and you're just like damn that one semblance of normalcy the that I wanted to hold wanted. on to. Yeah, and that was <laughs> the only reason I ran that far that early in the morning because I didn't sleep but for a couple hours. So, like, I was like, I'm just going to, like, get this shit out of my system. You yep. know, I'm going to run. And I ran, and I was so proud of myself. And I got there, and it was cold and sweaty. And then it was a child care center. And then I was just like, <sighs> and then I got a person who was the only their second ever Uber driver. And they were like, <laughs> it just turned into, like, you know, you know, throwing good time after bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, I just go back to the bus and cry now. Yeah, like, see, that's when I would just kind of probably start drinking. <laughs> yeah, I actually, uh, <laughs> yeah. my buddy Mike Damron picked me up and he let me shower at his house and we had lunch and stuff. Nice. It was really cool. But, uh, uh, side note, the nicest YMCA I've ever been in, uh, Phoenix. Really? Downtown Phoenix, yeah, if you're ever doing a show there and you need totally somewhere to work out. Check that out. I think it's uh, whatever the basketball team is there, the Heat or the Suns, mm -hmm. Suns. Uh, I think they have a partnership with it, and it's so also nice. it's super. Yeah, dope. it was like really, really. Yeah, cool. like all our YMCA's by our house are just super amazing. They all have pools and saunas and, and showers, and I was like, this is awesome. I'll just find a YMCA, and just the time I needed it was not a Portland thing. Yeah, you know, they were like, well, really? we YMCA in uh, Scranton was where me and all my siblings first went to preschool and. Oh wow! Out. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's where my nephews go now. So oh, that's wow. many decades later, it's pretty yeah. great. Apparently, they're doing that in Portland. So yeah, there you go. There you go. That's the only thing they do. I should have just went in there, the room full of kids and just start taking my clothes off. <laughs> that would go over sweaty. real. Where, where's the towels? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go over really it. well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. well. I said YMCA. No, you can't go to Oregon anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's like been banned. It's weird. Yeah, it's really weird. weird. Nobody would ever see again. It'd be like one of those internet things where you're kind of yeah, it was vilified. Uh, yeah, and I, you know, those pants, I love running pants. Like you had some on earlier, but yeah. uh, I like them like super tight to keep me warm. And it was really funny. I, I bought those pants that I was wearing in Portland uh, when I was doing um, High Water Music Festival down in, in Charleston. I would run every morning. And there was this old homeless lady uh, was looking at me as I was running. I just bought, you know, they're really tight and stuff. Yeah. And she was like, <laughs> she was like, look at you, you big dick motherfucker. Where are you running to? And I was like, oh my God. Like I kept running and I was like dying. <laughs> On the inside, and I texted my girlfriend Lydia, and Man, I was that like, probably wasn't... "This woman, <laughs> like, just said the most egregious shit to me." Which women get that all the time. I don't know, get me, it's fucking don't horrible. Don't get me wrong, it, but it was just so funny. Yeah, that I was like, "Oh wow, like that's fucking." That's hysterical. so good. I wonder what the day in the life of that person would be. Like, well, she that was in a wheelchair. The most outrageous thing she said. All oh day. no, she's in a wheelchair. She's a bigger lady, and I was like, "Whoa, what are we gonna do? Like, wheel you down the alley and like, have sex? <laughs> like, what? Like, yeah, where's where's your end game? Well, yeah, what's the end game?" <laughs> It's just a throw, wow. uh, throw weird. It just caught me so off guard. <laughs> I thought I was going to be like, do you got a dollar? I'm like, I can't stop. But it was like that. And that I was, was like, that. oh, wow. my God. I, like, ran another, like, half a block and just fell over laughing. I couldn't yeah. run anymore. I was like, I was like, did she? Oh, my God. She just so totally good. cat called me. So, I, yeah, I, uh, I have to thank you for my interest in podcasting for the reason I'm doing this. Oh, you know I'm a super nerd for them. Yeah, <laughs> you uh, introduced me to Radiolab years ago. That is the that best fucking, podcast. my life changed after that. It's so good. Yeah. Like, um, I was actually listening uh, to some really old ones with Lydia when we were driving up to um, – columbus recently incredible um and you can go back and find some really ones there's a really good one that you should check out that's from like 20 
12, probably when I told you about this stuff. Um, I can put a link to it in the notes for this. Uh, yeah, for this it was episode. called like, um, who are we or, or who we are or something like that. And it's this really existential thing with these test pilots who had out of body experiences. Oh from the yeah. Fuck and yeah. Stuff. And it's like really, really cool. Yeah. Listen to that one. Um, I'll see if I can dig it back up for you so you can know, but I, th- I think it's like, who are we? They did a, uh, what are we? They, they did a bunch of series back in 2012 and, and they were really good. So I went and listened to them when we were driving and they're just so amazing. Yeah. Like, so, so good. So. There's two episodes that I always, uh, try to refer people to or said that when they're looking at, uh, one of them is on color. Uh, there was oh. so much fascinating information about the you yeah, know, the evolution of the human eye. It's such the, more complicated of an organ than anything else. Right, and the word blue actually made the color blue. That's until, the craziest yeah. thing. So anybody listening to this, the Greeks when they were uh, translating the ancient Greek text, like the uh, you know the the Odyssey and all that, mm-hmm. they didn't have a word for blue. They just used words like like a different kind of gray or like a color of grapes and shit like that. Right. And they realized that they didn't have a word blue because they weren't the, they only named things colors when we were able to recreate the colors and right. blue dye is an incredibly difficult thing to come across. <laughs> so Especially they just then. didn't have a word for blue, yeah. which is fucking crazy. But then the minute you have a word for blue, then you can see blue. It's kind of like a really yeah matrix level shit. It it's is like, really, uh, it's, it's fucking wild. There's that one. And then there's also the episode about football. So even if you're not a football fan, I think it's better if yeah. you're not a football oh, with fan. Oh, with the Indian. Yeah, with uh, the Native Americans, Native Americans in Carlisle, Pennsylvania is where they kind of uh, – I would say indigenous people football yes. team would probably be appropriate. But yeah, no, Carlisle, Pennsylvania, it was so good. It's like, so fast. I was on the edge of my seat. I've listened to that one like four times. It's yeah. so good. It's so it's the one I always send to people to try to get them into Radio Lab. I actually recently uh, – my girlfriend, Beth Ann, she – uh, helps out with this podcast and stuff mm-hmm. too. She, hey, if you're listening. Hey, Beth Ann. Hey. She uh, got a job recently working for Drexel University. Nice. And we got to go see Jad Abumrad speak. <gasps> what? He did this full presentation about the time that he took off from Radio Lab. Uh-huh. And he just um, talked about the show and some things that he found out about himself. And it was amazing. It was a life changing. And that's why I started doing this. Uh, huh. It was a life changing kind of experience to see him. And I think he took it on tour. So if you get the chance to see Jad Abumrad oh do his live it. show, it is. It, yeah, it was so funny, well. so good. Well, and I love I love science. So I, I recently got in this book, Sapiens. That's out. It's like a bestseller. Uh, several people have told me to read it. I really it's want to. It's Pretty incredible. It's on my list um, in Audible, but I think I'd rather read the. No, book. No, no, Audible's good. good. Yeah. Uh, book will be great too. But I, I, for me, Audible was good because it's a very talky book, and they get the guy that reads. It's very like kind of British and like yeah. doing the so well, lends credibility the to it out of like, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it feels like you're getting a lecture from a professor. <laughs> so uh, that's kind of nice, and um, that was a really good book because they talked about like Aryan you know like the whole like but like people the cock like from the Caucasus Mountains the, the whole yeah like, like in India or like wherever like this master race thing comes from or whatever there was like a whole like chapter on it and like it was really fascinating and it, it wasn't as dirty or bad as I guess it seems like when you say those words nowadays oh but sure because they have the political like, connotations you know, like the, uh, <laughs> yeah. there's racist yeah want <laughs> but there was this idea and... that there had to be a master race and this one guy that figured it out was like this language and it was really crazy there's this chapter where like uh they're in india and they're they're british guys and they're like trying to just cover all of india like map it out you know and uh they didn't have any idea what this aryan words were they like it was, and you would ask the people in India, they were like, well, I don't know, this has been there for so long, we don't even know. We've yeah. changed the language, like, we don't know anything about it. So they have no idea. Dude's, like, exploring and sees this phrase and these giant letters carved on the rock side that was Aryan, like, Sumeric, and, and one other language. So it was kind the of exact like, a, same like phrase. a Rosetta Stone. Yeah, yeah and it was yeah. a Rosetta Stone on the side of a mountain somewhere that they were exploring it's fucking crazy. and he got super fascinated with it and then they were able to trace back, like, all this, like, crazy Aryan... Stuff and just be clear, I, mean, I don't mean like you're not talking white, white power, we're no, talking about no, the actual, just like this idea of this, like, it's two bald white guys yeah, with tattoos. I, maybe you know, it's like the idea that, like, uh, that like that maybe there were aliens or something. I think kind of like there was some kind of like thing where there's really these people that like maybe kind of helped all these people. That's what's yeah, the idea. I don't know. I don't know. And that's from the Sapiens book? Yeah. Nice. That's, uh, I mean, I've spent a lot of time, as you know, lots Mm -hmm. of time uh, learning and researching different conspiracy theories, and a lot of them fall back into the kind of ancient uh, astronaut or alien intervention theories. Yeah. It's pretty fascinating. I mean, it's an easy, it's, it's an easy... It's an easy leap to go like, well, just fucking alien. Like, yeah, just alien. <laughs> just like, like, I, I hate know. the ones that are just like a, a, a like a rock carving. That's something that looks like a helicopter per se. And oh, it's like, yeah. You're kind well, of just making that up. You're really reaching here, bro. You got yeah, you to talk like well, there the, was the, one... the etymological, like the language kind of basis stuff is really fascinating. Yeah, the language stuff. And I saw this one that was like an old scroll from Japan in like the 14th 
hundreds or something, and it was a woman coming out of like basically a spacecraft, but it was like a drawing with writing about a story uh, of this woman that washed up on shore in this like saucer like spacecraft. So cool. It was so weird, and I was like, well, maybe that's I don't know. I mean, is it that far fetched? Like we as humans would definitely like you know. Yeah, we launched shit so many other planets on all the, the time. Yeah, somebody yeah. didn't sneeze on the fucking Voyager, and now there's like. You know, but Earth bacteria floating out in the fucking ether Who somewhere. Knows? Yeah. Who knows? Not us. I love I thinking about it though. It's I really, cool. uh, I do think that there is, uh, po- uh, at least from my, you know, humble observations, that there's a great possibility that there was a um, uh, trans ocean civilization that existed oh, yeah. earlier than we think it is, or a lot of oh, time yeah. than a lot of uh, anthrop- anthropologists. Did think you ever see that one crazy city in Japan that's just in the ocean and they have no idea where it came from? Yeah, like totally. Pyramids and and they argue over whether or not it's actually a thing. I mean, you look at it, it's like, fucking bro, right it looks angles. Like it's like, yeah, it's like <laughs> built and stairs and shit. They're like, yeah. natural rock formations. Yep. And you're like, oh, it's like, no. I don't know. It doesn't fit your theory. Big yeah. ships turn slow and you're turning a little too slow. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I don't know. You know, I mean, there's some really cool stuff, but I mean, God only knows. Like, to me, I'm like, when we were talking about this earlier about like being a, you know, a bag of DNA and your history and stuff like that. It's like, you know, I only got this short time in my life to do what I want to do and like, yeah. experience what I want to experience. I just want to go do that. Like, I'm not like trying to solve the great mysteries or no. like do the thing. I just want to get paid, have a good time, have yeah. a good relationship with my girlfriend and my kid and, um, help people and like, you know, yeah, they, uh, hopefully and, maybe leave the world a little bit better than it was yeah. when you got here. For, yeah. For I mean, we're all going to get forgotten. You know, oh, we're yeah. all going to get forgotten. That's why at Radio Lab you hear about these people that were super famous in the 20s and 30s, and then you're like, I've never heard of this dude. Yeah, he never. was like the most super famous person, and that wasn't even like, you know, like 80 years ago. And that was with media. You know, yeah, yeah. So and now it's like oh, gro- grotesque, like the media. So it's like, you know, <laughs> they would come in and be like, oh, the leaders of this world were like Kim Kardashian and mm-hmm. Donald Man, Trump. Man, I heard like, somebody say something that I haven't talked to anybody about, uh, with anyone it. about. So I heard this guy say this on a podcast. And his idea was that, all right, he had, he had paired it from someone else, so I'm going to do a bad, even sure. worse job, like <laughs> that, that, that telephone game you play in school. Uh, so because of the fact that you and I have so much information about ourselves out there through uh-huh. Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, that kind of thing, yeah. but we're the first to have it. So True. as we carry it on, as we have kids and the kids have kids and the kids have kids. And so like Instagram. several generations later, we're going to be like the founders of the bloodline because there's going to be so much information. So like, like a digital bloodline, like a digital bloodline, but also huh. like, uh, they will be like, Oh, well, I don't know <laughs> the furthest, like maybe in a couple hundred years, I'll be like, the furthest I can trace my family back is to this. This fucking Instagram this, post. Yeah, this dickhead who plays in a band. <laughs> Where my mom and dad post. met at a show. Yeah, which I think my first Instagram post is like a blurry picture of me like standing without a shirt on drinking a beer. I think mine's from Jacksonville, North Carolina. I, I was an early adopter of Instagram, so I think it, mine goes all the way back to like 2007 or nice. six or something. Like whenever it was really, really old. My daughter was only like seven. She's 16, so it had to be like 10 years old. So like right around that time. Yeah. Um, yeah, the idea is there'll be some like – Photographs maybe of my grandparents, or there's yeah. some paperwork about the people before them. But after that, there's like nothing, nothing. I so mean, there's this paper it gets lost and burnt up, and people yeah, totally. change their names. Like, yeah, I, I watched the Ken Burns The West. That was fascinating. I highly recommend it. I gotta um, watch that. I just and, rewatched uh, Civil War. By I myself. rewatched Civil War. That thing was not stoked. The whole time I was rewatching Civil War, I was like, "What is going on out in California?" Because you have the gold rush happen right before the Civil War, and like, yeah. So I was like, "Oh yeah, Kim Burns did this West thing," and I just got infatuated with the West. It was because it was concurrent with what I had just seen, and I'm like, "Oh, I see how this is like a thing," and I think the thing I took away from it is like we're so racist as a as a group of people from history like chinese people and oh my god the poor indigenous people of this country like we're just like fucked on the regular basis like and you know it's just like makes me really sad and but it was also like uh really awesome because they had like a lot of writings from the indians like or, first person uh, indigenous people like yeah. that were like in conflicts with like custer and stuff like that and they had described custer's last stand you know like you know when he like took on the indian tribe didn't know that like all the tribes were there yeah fuck dumb drunk and the yeah and then the the indian guy was like it was over um before like as fast as a, a, a man who's uh been starving for a week would eat bread Wow. It, was like, it was over that fast. It was like, phew, phew. and then they cut off all their arms and limbs yeah. and stacked. I mean, they just like were just like, fuck this dude. Yeah. And I mean, then, people, I don't even need to say it, are pretty fucking 
you know, They're horrible awful. to our own devices. Oh, yeah, and you and get all this the, stuff where people are like, oh, the South is, like, so racist and blah, blah, blah. And I'm man, like, just look at a fucking map of a school district in any major northeastern city and say worse. that the South is racist. You yeah, know? Oh, my God, Michigan, total racist. No offense to anybody from Michigan who's not racist. But uh, And then, like, I heard about in Seattle, they put, like, like 70 or 80,000 Chinese people on a boat, and they were like, we don't want you here. Get up, get the fuck out. Jesus. And they just sh- they pushed them into the ocean on a boat, and we're like, just don't come back. That's fucking crazy. But, but like, you know, Seattle people were like, we're progressive we're not racist and it's like <laughs> you are so racist built like, on the blood oh of God, other people yeah. <laughs> and like like everybody like even especially with like uh, native americans or uh, indigenous people and uh, spaniards you know got really like kind of fucked too because yeah. they had been here for a while yeah each ones that came in a wave i mean irish when they came italians when they came i just can't even imagine Germans what it was they like came. they just like as they went west they were just like this is mine and then somebody's like oh i own all this they were like well i'll fight you for it and it's like whoa yeah. well, i guess that's where this whole just... wild west comes from but like it was just so crazy like all the sand cities san diego los angeles like they were all like um they set up Catholic missions uh, yeah. to out of Mexico City to like just occupy the coast because they were afraid the Russians were going to come in and stuff, and they kind of weren't anticipating people from um, the east, from east coming over. And then when they did, they were all really welcoming. They were like, "Yeah, like you guys are Christians too. Like this will be awesome." Yeah. Oh my God, it was like the worst thing that could worst because there's like you know the tribal nature of racism where it's like you, I can see a visible difference than you. You. Mm-hmm. Uh, whether you you know you're uh, darker skinned right. or you speak a different language or whatever, uh, that's like an easy division that you can draw to use people to fight each other. Totally. But then easy. there's the institutional racism that exists in the institutions that we are still exist in the states oh, today. Yeah. You know, it's a uh, that have roots back into that. Yeah, that. And like, it's like just well, they're inherently different. racist. They're dumb. Um, it was really funny. I, I'm reading this book called "The 400 Year History of White Trash in America." Whoa! Yeah, it's really it's really deep, and it was really kind of funny because they talk about a lot about the stuff where um, people came over from England, but they weren't like good people. Like I guess you always see like Sir Walter Raleigh and all these like re, you know refined people like Christopher Columbus and stuff, but it wasn't. It was just like these rough hewn like people that they just were like bro because they knew they were gonna die, so they just sent their riffraff there. Yeah, it would be like now. If, who who do you think would go to like you know Mars now? Yeah, be, be like, like some thrill dickhead. seeking. Yeah. yeah, some like some like oh shit, I burn every bridge here. You yeah, know? <laughs> like, well, fuck it, it's just me. <laughs> but then like you know uh, they sent all these people here, and then they got like they were working the land and stuff, but they didn't own anything because like George Washington and all those dudes. Yeah, if so. I'm not mistaken, the concept of that kind of property wasn't even instilled until the, right, the land like enclosure act. Kind of like rich people had all the property. Yeah, still. And people farmed on common lands, and they're yeah. like, "Oh no, we're gonna draw them all out, and everyone's like gonna Boston own them." Commons, now. right? Yeah. And what was really funny was like apparently it was really hard to get the uh, American, newly American people from England to fight against like the king of England because they would be like, "You gotta fight it. They're gonna take our land." And they're like, "Well, we don't have any land. Yeah. Like, they're gonna take your <laughs> land, bro. Like yeah. I don't need to fight this." So they had to work out these really weird deals that give them land and, and slaves. Like, Virginia was giving away slaves to people that conscripted in the military because it was property. Wow. So, like, to get them to fight, it wasn't this big, like, we should just overturn Britain, and they're so... No, it was, yeah. like, not so like that exactly at exactly how, I guess, if you think about it, it would, it would have to, you have to incentivize people. You know, yeah. Everybody's out to get theirs, you know? Yeah. Like, it's... Yeah, it's pretty crazy. You're not going to fight for something that, like... I mean, if somebody was like, hey, man, they're breaking into my house, and they're going to, you know, burn my car, but, like... Oh, I mean, aside from you being my neighbor, yeah, you like, know, I don't like, really well, have any incentive. To, why are they doing that? And they're yeah. like, well, they think I stole it from them or whatever. Like, did you? Like, you know, it's like this whole <laughs> yeah, thing. Right. And I guess that's kind of like the British American kind of like, you know, uh, back and forth. Wow. Yeah, the first time I was ever exposed to some of those themes was reading uh, People's History of the United States mm-hmm. by uh, Howard Zinn, and he brings uh, puts a but uh, I'm gonna not do a good job of this, whatever. Uh, several examples of the racial tension that was intentionally sown between. Poor whites and oh my God. Uh, yes. uh, ex-slaves in the South because it was like, well, they both realized, well, we're both poor. Why would we want to fight each other? Right. It's kind of like uh, the more rich people really kind of created laws and institutions to really drive a wedge between them, especially like newly arrived immigrants from like mm-hmm. – uh, you know, Ireland and in Italy and, and Germany and shit like that. And they're like, I'm Irish, but I'm not black. And like, All right. <laughs> exactly. You're better than that guy. And there's like a really great quote that they use in that book a bunch of times where they said, well, if you can point the classes at them, it's really about class war. If you can just point the classes, they'll squibble. If you tell this person they're better than that person or give them an advantage, then they squibble. They'll be busy and fighting then, each other. Yeah, they're busy fighting each other and then everybody up top, kind of like Donald Trump's doing now. It's like yeah. get all the people squibbling at the low level and then he's up here going like, we're hanging with Russia. You know, We helped yeah. that Saudi Whatever, Arabia. We're making dude. money. We're, everything's yeah. for sale. Yeah, It's kind of scary. Well. So it just kind of like, it just seems like history repeats itself. Yeah, DNA, it bro.
DNA. That's what I wanted to segue <laughs> into. So before this, we were talking about uh, a little bit about DNA and the idea of like uh, I don't know if you'd call it phylogenic yeah. uh, passing on of of, of possibly. Or just actual genetic. memories, or just, just genetic. genetic, just genetic, yeah, or the things about genes that we don't quite understand yet, and the idea that, um, well, first, maybe we could talk about the, the Genghis Khan thing, oh, which yeah. I've heard it uh, talked about a million times. I don't have the exact statistic, but it's well, like... Yeah, it's like a, a large number of people. A um, huge swath of people in uh, the Asian continent can be traced back to Genghis I think Khan. there's a radio lab on this, Is there? by the way. Yeah, yeah, of course. It's really good, and like it's he's got a, like a defect, or there's this one defect in this gene that all his progeny got, and then... Like they, you know, multiply, multiply, multiply. Well, they were starting to like look at this. They were like, "Oh, there's this really weird anomaly in the in the genetic code." Oh, there's really. And then as they got further up, they're like, "Why is this all the way in Russia? Why is this?" And it didn't exist before. Yeah, it only existed after this certain time. And they they postulate that it was uh, Genghis Khan and his conquering and raping and kill, killing of like the paternal aspects of of stuff and then yeah. raping the women and then they would raise babies and then those guys would go on and and it just if you think about that on a um logarithmic scale <laughs> you know, it starts with one and then it's four. Oh, you know? we're gonna uh got a little somebody knock on the hey, door yeah. real quick sorry about that <laughs> extremely extremely professional yeah well it's, it's right. a christmas gift for me from uh, Beth Ann. I have no idea what it is, but oh, really? I'm not going to open Don't it. Yeah, she it. said it. She was like, I it's like coming surprises. To right? Magic is surprises. Magic so. is surprises. So I'm kind of into surprises. My favorite thing to chase after, I like surprises, is the when you learn something or find out something that changes the way that you looked at the world before. Yeah. Like which a, you have done to me plenty of times. <laughs> I don't know if that's true, but yeah. I just like, I like to look at the world a very, uh, kind of a factual based way. And I think like, you know, people create their own narratives and stuff, and sometimes you can get in your own narrative, and like you have to really like step back and go like, well, what's the real thing that I'm I'm going for in my life? Um, so like sometimes people like mistake facts and <sighs> events or whatever, and and it, and then that can become like really um, heartbreaking for like people's relationships or like you know, and so I think it's it's our mindful duty to like really respect. Uh, what you put out in that world and, and really control like your narrative and, and really like think about how you want to be as a person and how you want to be remembered as a person to your friends and stuff. Oh, yeah. um, you know, I'm like it's a very self-examined and beautiful thing to say. Yeah. I mean, I don't, not that I'm like super into it or anything. I just, I, that's how I try to live my life. Like, um, thin lips recently had a van thing and I was yeah. like, they're like, can you Venmo some money? And I don't use Venmo, but I had like a hundred and some odd dollars in there and I just gave it to them and they were like, Fuck Oh my yeah. God, you're so awesome. And that's I'm like, awesome. you needed it. I love you let me put this out in the world for you. You've always been great to me. You know, I did their yeah, hell yeah. record release show uh, a couple years ago on my birthday and stuff. And, you know, I just really like supporting people because people supported me. So I'm just trying to like, that's my narrative, right? Like people support me. Like uh, all 97s took a huge risk for me being on this tour. Um, and it's going really, really well. Yeah. That's um, fantastic to hear. I'm so excited to see your set tonight. <laughs> I can't great. wait. You can, yeah, maybe you can give a summary of it or something. Yeah. There you be go. Good, you know? Hell yeah. Like, oh, it was so dope. I hope that's what you say. And then everything's going to go wrong and be like, it would have been so dope. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Actually, I've been trying to do something uh, with everybody at the end of the, like a little extra thing that just okay. plays afterwards. Maybe I'll bring the recorder to the, uh, yeah. to the show. Like I did one, uh, Roger made a cocktail. <laughs> we had a batch make it, we had a little video of it. We did, nice. uh, I did a song with Lee Corey Oswald and stuff like that. Maybe oh, wow. The, bring the quarter out to the show. Put a little, bit, cool. a little yeah. bit of noise at the end there. Bring it. That would be fun. Be great. Are yeah. you staying all night or you have to get back? I have to get back. Okay. Yeah. This is won't come out at the time, but uh, we're having a surprise party for our friend here at the house yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, um, I remember. Yeah, so yeah. thank you for taking time to be at my show. Oh, I can't. I'm so excited. It's at hey, TLA, which I live exactly one mile away and from. And you it's haven't perfect. seen me like on a full stage show. Like I've opened for you guys before, but yeah. it's like a one-off kind of situation. But this is like a full 45-minute set. Oh, I can't wait. Um, so it kind of has a narrative to it, sort of. Oh, that's um, awesome. A little one. Um, I'm trying to like work on that. That's every night, performance after performance, work on that with that narrative. That's is. awesome. So hell yeah. I wondered I said, since I don't get to talk to scientists very often, maybe we'll <laughs> talk a little bit more about this, and then we can r- yeah, wrap yeah. it up. The explanation that you were giving me of sticky DNA. Yeah. So the idea being that uh, it's the com- it's the random part of the mixing of DNA when. Uh, you know, a man and a woman come together and have a baby. Uh, but the idea being that there's not, it's not like an ion 
ch- ionic charge for uh-uh. a molecule in chemistry when they, that's why those chemicals it's like really bond together. It's sticky. Yeah. So yeah. like when those genes are like touching and the and the uh, paternal and maternal genes are like kind of touching, uh, like it's called sticky ends, and they um, they have like a lot of the like really. I don't know, just different traits and they stick and they pull parts of the DNA off and, and make new parts and like they just kind of like are constantly changing. Sometimes they change, sometimes they don't. It's like a, a new thing they've kind of been looking at over the last like couple decades or whatever. But just the fact that that's where the randomness comes in. Yeah. So like a lot of times you have people that look like their parents identically, like one mom or the dad. And then you know, there's some people that are kind of a little bit of each, like got my mom's nose, my dad's lips, yeah. my uncle's eyes or whatever. That's that whole sticky DNA thing kind of happening and changing pieces. And for DNA to be, God, I'm so, so going to nerd out. I mean, there's only like I four love it every second of it, so amino please. acids, you know, yeah. uh, or uh, four, um, what you call them? Uh, I've been so long out peptides of school. Or peptides. Or, yeah. or No, it's not peptides. It's, uh, you know, the adenine, guanosine, cytosine, uracil, yeah. that stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, there's only four of those, and the different combinations start and stop things. It's like, and you know, it unzips. It's like so fucking fascinating, and it's so compact, and it and it programs everything your whole body. And that's what I was saying, you know, earlier is that maybe your disposition's in there too. Right? Yeah. Like why you act like your dad, or why you act like your mom, and that's people have been trying to prove and disprove uh, nature versus nurture, and it's still a coin flip, right? Like, yeah. Who knows? Because like I was brought up in a really violent household, so. I didn't turn out violent. So is that, it wasn't in my DNA or is that I made a choice to not be that way? Mm-hmm. I mean, I like to think I made a choice, but maybe I was already predestined to kind of. You had a little shove. It could be a combination of the two. Yeah. And a little uh, push who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit of both. You know, you have the ability to do it. And I think that's a really, really, really cool thing. Yeah. I like, think it's going to be on the forefront of the way that we discuss um, morality and society, especially as the, you know, the, the sci-fi ability to, <laughs> to do to stuff. change g- genes. Maybe uh, that's where it gets scary. I think yeah. too, like I don't want to get manipulative too much, but like, um, you know, like you can map the genome and then you map certain genes. That's kind of how they do cancer research and stuff. Now they block certain genes from, um, expressing themselves. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually why, uh, AIDS or HIV is a, is a really thing. It's a retrovirus. So it actually implants itself in your DNA and replicates itself. It's like a really crazy thing. Yeah. I always that. wonder whether or not the viruses are, are cosmic in nature. You know, like right. So what they do is else. they give you medicine that finds that thing. So it can't make itself. Yeah. So that's what stymies it, right? Ah, so no like shit. When, okay. the, when the DNA unzips, it's just stuck itself in there, right? And uh, so they make this chemical or whatever, and it just locks into it so it can't replicate itself. Like it puts like a, a, a stymie on it in wow. a sense. Maybe not every one, but um, it's definitely really cool. And um, So cool. DNA blows my mind in the sense that my limited understanding of, of, of chemistry and, and, and physics and biology from, from high school and through like mm-hmm. just independent research as, as I've grown – is that the there's four basic chemicals, right? Yeah. They're not too complicated, but the amount of information that they hold right. for the DNA to teach these cells to grow and become certain things is fucking mind blowing. Oh yeah. So Absolutely. mind blowing that they only mapped the first human genome code, was it a decade ago? Yeah, but it took them like years. It took them years, years with all years. of the b- fastest computers in the world. <laughs> you know? Doing it like 24 hours a yeah, day. Yeah, doing it like 24 hours a day. Yeah, oh, and that's so tiny you can't even see it. You know. Yeah. And what's really cool about that is like cancer is caused by a glitch in your DNA, but it's only a glitch if it's a glitch on the exact opposite side of itself. So it's like like you have to have a glitch on this, like when the DNA unzips and like adenine and, and – cytosine or guanine and cytosine or whatever they like yeah. touch when they undo if this one messes up you'll still be like if the guanine side messes up you still be good because you have another half of the dna making so there's cool like a, f- a built-in fail safe right but if what they the both fuck? fuck then you're done then you're like, done then yeah, you're gonna have like, you're like, gonna like have a cancer, so. defects and things well and like it's that. like it's a lot of times cancers around start and stop codons so like there's a different codes that go through the DNA and it tells when uh, when it unzips where to start and where to finish and to send that peptide out to make a communication. So uh, if you have a stop codon fuck up, that's where cancer comes because it'll keep, re- so it'll send out, that's why you get tumors with teeth and wow. weird shit in it. So like, okay, if no it shit. starts and the stop codon's messed up, it'll just 
it'll just gloss over it and then it'll keep making all the other stuff that's in your DNA. That's why tumors have like teeth and hairs yeah. and like all kind of that's weird so shit. That's so fascinating. Yeah, and like tumors are just keep going because they, they just keep replicating. They're like, but there's no death. There's no, there's a pre-programmed cell death in the DNA. So the cells know when to die. Your yeah. skin cells, they just, they slough you off and like it makes mold. more. That's why I'm, I can't yeah. wear black shirts. There's <laughs> <You> molds <laughs> mold from my head. But that's constantly happening. But if anything happens with that, you know, in that stop code on, on two sides of it, remember it's two sides, then you're gonna have a, a really yeah, bad have a problem. Tough time. I uh, this is definitely drifting into woo woo territory Sorry. of uh, uh, the whole thing. But I always wonder what effect, if at all. Maybe it's just a super egotistical thing to think about humans. I wonder if our kind of um, emotional uh, and psychological and consciousness based kind of uh, activities and experiences ever have some kind of effect on the changing of the DNA that we don't fully understand yet. Maybe some kind of like. Like you it's can't necessarily say. will your own DNA to change, but like you know, who knows? Maybe. Yeah, who knows? Who if knows? Like my great, 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 great grandfather that got, you know, his throat cut by whatever the fuck. Yeah, a pirate. Yeah, pirate. Like that Highwayman <laughs> song. Yeah. I was a band builder. Yeah. I was wrong. Whatever, you know, <laughs> maybe like, that's why I'm afraid to like of deep water or something. You know? yeah. like, maybe our well, phobia. I think from, that song like, a, is that right. There's these highwaymen, and they're like kind of through the ages, being like horrible pirates and dam builders and whatever. You no know, shit, uh, really. Well, you think about. It. You ever heard the Highwaymen? I don't think so. No, it's I, like no, I did that thing. Why not? It anyway. Chris Christopherson no and all shit. these guys. Yeah, it's a really cool song, but it's kind of like these dudes who are these ruffians through time. It was really funny. Uh, I was at uh, Thanksgiving with Lydia, uh, my girlfriend, and her uh, her nephew was singing, and he was like, I was a damn builder. I slipped and fell because I didn't follow the regular. And we were just dying because he was, like, singing the whole <laughs> thing, and he was like, I'm because I'm damn clumsy. And, like, you know, it was like, and I died, and I died. You know, it was really, really funny. And I started thinking about that. I'm like, oh, yeah, all these dudes fucking died. Yeah. Like, it's you'll dark. see. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I can't Cash, wait to it. It's pretty crazy. I'm going to put a link to that in the, uh, in the yeah, show Yeah, you can fade well. out with the highway, man. Yeah, <laughs> don't put it in. Hell oh, yeah, man. But uh, yeah, thank you for that DNA lesson, and thank you for uh, uh, talking with I me today. It's been anytime. fucking incredible. Easier to talk than the text. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Hell yeah. That's a, I'm gonna, in 2019, I'm going to have a small um, uh, resolution to call way more than, than, than text. You ever oh. notice how sometimes you think yeah. that texting is going to get something accomplished easier, but it Does makes it? it way harder? Oh, it makes it so much But if you harder. just call somebody and you're like, all right, what are you doing? Yeah. Do you want to go to this at this time? Or oh, it like doesn't you, work for you. you I'll go this. You mistype a word and somebody takes it as one thing and it's like not another yeah like they they put their own feet on it right oh my god and so yeah. like it's like oh what are you trying to be an a-hole or like are dude you, what no it's, it's worse like, yeah it's like so but then you're like you over you're over correcting your test yeah. i hate it it's messy it's the worst yeah well on that note we won't text we won't text. We'll we're gonna do this we'll just, we'll just like make and it call talk. dates i uh here's one for you how do we end this i always don't know what to do it's comf- it's easy when you cheer somebody yeah, yeah. i don't know if we should like yeah. shake hands uh yeah, if, can you do a high uh, five we can we can cheers yeah i'll get you water yeah, and yeah, red cheers Bowl. cheers to you mike thank, thank you so much so love much. you brother it's my favorite yeah. Hey, thank you for listening to the podcast. You can check out Casey Magic at CaseyMagic.com and on social media at Casey Magic. On his website, he's got links to YouTube and Facebook and all them jammers. Uh, huge thanks again to Enjoy Co. Barbershop for sponsoring the episode. Go get your hair cut. You look like shit. Uh, you don't look like shit. I'm sorry. I don't know where I came from. I don't know why I said it, and I take it back. I'm sure you look great. Uh, you can reach me at Tom A. All Day on social media. Uh, go to www.futurefriday.net and send me an email or something. Love you. Bye. Which one? <laughs> that narrows it down. What was it? Ace of Spades? The lemon card? Philadelphia, Ace of fucking Spades. Thank you so much. I'm Casey Magic. Thanks to my helpers. Thanks to the whole 97s. Coming up next.